is a story of adventure with Richard Whitmark as your host. The Sears Radio Theater will begin. This is Richard Whitmark. The man sitting in the small whitewashed room under the slowly rotating fan is Arnold McGuffey, an American. We're in East Africa. McGuffey might be poised there before a battered desk staring at an ancient typewriter for any number of reasons. He could be a hunter preparing to write a letter home about the kill. He might be a journalist about to write the first of a devastating series of articles on poaching. Or he could be a novelist composing the landmark book on man's attitude when he at last faces death. Mr. McGuffey? Not now, Miss Genera. It will only take a moment. Not now, Miss Genera. Not just right now. The beautiful girl hesitates in the doorway, then impatiently waits as Arnold McGuffey strikes the keys of the battered typewriter. To the Drug Enforcement Administration, Washington, D.C. Attention. General Director Dexter Hamilton. Subject, intercept of opium shipment. Which answers the age-old question, what's Arnold McGuffey doing in East Africa? And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love, hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. The McGuffey Connection by Ted Sheridan. Our stars, William Shallert, Peggy Weber, and Ben Wright. It's almost as though they've been waiting for us. The stunning Miss Elena impatiently standing at the open door while Arnold McGuffey labors at his typewriter. I can no longer wait. This will only take a moment. Can't you see I'm busy? This is to let you know I have not heard from my contact yet, and no doubt I ever Mr. will. Mr. McGuffey, please. I have to get this report off to my boss, Elena. That can wait. There's someone here who wants to study the termites in Cajiado District, and the adults are due to emerge from the mounds in a few months. I'm writing about intercepting an opium shipment due to arrive any moment. She's talking about termites and... What do you call them? Alates. Uh. They are the winged male termites. And the person inquiring needs a teacher. And I need a guard at the door to keep you from barging in. Winged male termites of all... Can we supply a teacher? Answer, yes or no? No. Now get out of here. Maybe I'll send him to the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology in Nairobi. Miss Genera, please just leave and close the door. I didn't know termites had been around for 250 million years. My word. Please advise, how on earth, without my contact, I am to intercept, confiscate, and destroy a shipment of opium before it reaches Marseille and France to be converted into heroin. Your instructions used to be very clear. For instance, when you first gave me my orders back in Washington. And we believe the freighter will first put in here, at Mombasa in Kenya. As you can see by the map, it's in East Africa. Where's the ship coming from? From Rangoon. That's in Burma. I know where it is, Dexter. Why is it putting in at Mombasa? Well, I don't know. The operative in Burma thinks the ship is going through the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, and then on to Marseille. Who's the operative? Well, that's top secret. Uh, your contact will get in touch with you about the freighter's arrival. And what am I to do in the meantime? Well, we've arranged a cover for you. Not like the last time, please. What was that? 
I was an American bullfighter in Spain. <laughs> oh, that. Well... I wound up being gored by a bull, Dexter, in Seville. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Well, you won't be gored by anything this time unless you bleed when you open a school book. I beg your pardon? Uh, you're to start a school in Kenya. Start a school? Yeah, that's right. Under the auspices of some church. What church? Well, we'll, we'll make one up. Maybe we'll call it the, the Church of Faith. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> that I should be a churchman running a school. That's better than bullfighting. Not much. And that's my cover, a school? Yeah. I've arranged for the army to supply you with a lot of self-teaching textbooks. Here's your plane ticket to Nairobi. You'll be met by one of our agents there, Perry North. Does he know about this cockamamie cover? No, no. Bring him up to date. And uh, keep in touch with me. Mr. McGuffey? I'm Arnold McGuffey. I'm Perry North, sir. Welcome to Nairobi, sir. <laughs> Thanks, but my name's Arnold McGuffey, not sir. Yes, sir, Mr. McGuffey, sir. Did you have a nice flight? Good enough. And <laughs> why the frown, Perry? You have several cases of school books. I thought we were to work on a drug shipment from Burma. We are. Any word from the contact yet? No, Mr. McGuffey. See, the books are our cover while we're waiting. <laughs> we're going to start a school run by the Church of Faith. Yeah? Wherever we please, Nairobi, Mombasa, wherever. I lean toward Mombasa. It is cooler there because it is on the Indian Ocean. It's also where the opium ship is due to put in. Ah, uh, yes. And the school is to be our cover. That's right. <laughs> Can you imagine a couple of narcotics enforcers posing as churchmen and starting a school? <laughs> You're not laughing. I have a master's degree in education. It was once my dream to teach illiterates how to read and write. How come you ended up a narc? How come people generally end up doing something they were never trained for? Good question. The point is, I have to clear the way to let the Church of Faith start a school. I can help you with the authorities. Good. Then to get in touch with the contacts so we can act when that opium shows up. What now, Perry? Oh, just thinking, sir. And maybe I'll finally get a chance to use my flashcards after all. What are you talking about? The school, Mr. McGuffey. The school. Perry North was invaluable, both in clearing our cover with the authorities and in organizing the school. We took a building near the waterfront in Mombasa. From my office on the second floor, I had a fine view of Kilindini, the spacious harbor. I was observing various ships through binoculars one day when Perry North knocked politely at the door. Come in. You heard yet, Mr. McGuffey, sir? From the contact? Not a word. <laughs> the names they give some of these ships. Humperdink Rosnovic. And it's a cruise ship to boot. <laughs> Imagine saying, I'm sailing on the Humperdink Rosnovic. <laughs> oh, so why I'm here? Uh, we need to teach the subjects the books don't cover, like riveting, welding, Kenyan economy, uh, accounting. We've got textbooks on accounting. Uh, yes, but they are in dollars and we are in Kenya. We use pounds here. Ah, I see what you mean. Well, do what you want about it. It's up to you to run the school. I think we should divide the school into three parts. Three parts? I will act as dean of the primary school, teaching illiterates to read, write, and do simple sums. Then we need a dean of the technical school and a dean for advanced education. What is advanced education? Anything that doesn't fit into the other two schools. Like typing. <laughs> so line up your deans. I have, but there's one problem... The dean of the technical school also wants to be a student in the primary school. Wait, wait. Let me understand this, Perry. The dean of the technical school can't read or write? No, Mr. McGuffey. But he's a genius at fixing motors, air conditioners, and so on. His name is Logan Peebles. A Kenyan? No. White, Englishman. He's employed at Cannot Go Taxis. Oh. And the dean of what you call advanced education? She is Indian. She? Her name is Olena Janeira. She's employed by the High Commissioner. How come you picked a woman? Well, I heard her on the voice of Kenya one night being interviewed, and she said she was very interested in doing something for our country. So I contacted the radio station, found her, explained the school, and uh, she's very pretty, too. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why she's dean, because she's pretty. Uh, because she's bright. 
She also works part-time as a Red Cross volunteer at the Catherine B.B. Hospital. Well, Perry, it's up to you. And when do classes start? Uh, next week, I hope. Would you like to meet them? Meet who? It's the dean. They're waiting outside. <laughs> okay. Would you like to come in now? Yes, right. sir. Uh, Mr. McGuffey, uh, this is Miss Olena Janera and Mr. Logan Peebles. How do you uh, do? Uh, uh, Pleased uh, to meet you. Uh, I have to get back to the hacks. Uh, Mr. North explained you were employed by a taxi company. For the time being. And you'll get instructors and teach yourself? So long as he can teach me reading and writing. I can teach you, Mr. Peebles. Um, do, do I have to join your church? North here said you were operating this here school under something called the uh, Church of Faith. Oh, well, we, we are, but you don't have to join it. Nobody does. Uh, Unless he wants to. Oh, I don't want to. And I cannot. I am Hindu. And a very pretty one. So I have been told, Mr. Magafe, numerous times. Well, uh... Is this it? Uh, can I go back to my job now? Absolutely. Just wanted you to meet Mr. McGuffey, head of the operation. Oh, we'll see you next week, then. So long. Goodbye. A few questions, Mr. McGuffey. I'll try to answer them, Miss... Uh... Uh, Genera. Olena Genera. I can teach shorthand and typing in Swahili, Arabic, or English. Which do you prefer? Well, uh... Take it up with Perry here. I mean, whatever you decide is okay with and me. And I, I had some thoughts on the technical training. The things Mr. Peebles cannot handle. Uh, well, what thoughts? Uh, refer students who want such things as mechanical drawing, for instance, to the Mombasa Technical Institute. That's an excellent idea, Olena. Miss Genera, if you please. Uh, Miss Genera. Good idea, eh, Mr. McGuffey, sir? Oh, splendid, Mr. North. Mr. McGuffey... What are the binoculars on your desk for? Well, I, uh, I like to look at the ships coming and going. Yeah. Mm hmm Bon voyage, Mr. McGuffey. Mr. North? See you next week? Of course. Goodbye. I'll see you back to your office, Miss Janera. I have a moped, so it is not necessary, Mr. North. You, you didn't tell her the real reason I was here, Perry. Oh, of course not, Mr. McGuffey. Well, then why the crack about the binoculars? Oh, maybe she was just curious. <sighs> She's certainly pretty. I wish you luck. The school, Dexter, seemed to be doing a thriving business thanks to the efforts of Perry North, Logan Peebles, and especially Olena Gennaro. The three deans and I met each night to discuss the progress of the students, but I listened with only half an ear because I remained anxious about intercepting that opium shipment. Spent most of my time looking at the ships as they came into Killandini Harbor. I also kept a watch on the sea-going dows in the old harbor of Mombasa for my daily walks to the bottom of the Kuma Road. It wasn't until Perry North asked me to have a look at his class in illiteracy that I even began to take an interest in the school. No, class, pick up your pencils. I will show you a drawing, a picture of an object. Then turn over the card, and you will see the letters that spell the object's name. You are then to write the letters after I turn the card face down on this table. Clear? What, teacher? Yes, Troika. <laughs> are we to write in English or Swahili? Either one, though I recommend you write both. The cards are printed in both languages, like this. English, and below it, Swahili. Clear? Nadia, Bona teacher. Okay. Now, here is a picture of a lion. Does everyone see it? Now, I turn it over, and you see the letters. The first is in English, L-I-O-N. Beneath it is Swahili, S-I-M-B-A. Okay, now write it. school was only his cover for the opium shipment he was in Mombasa to stop. Arnold McGuffey's interest grew after he visited one of Logan Peebles' classes and heard the Dean of Technical Education say, We're going to keep on studying carburetors till you learn what they're for, what they do, and how to fix them. Now, which one of you remembers how many different kinds there are? Uh, you there, Leander. Uh, three types are used in internal combustion engines. Surface, weak, and jet. Correct. Now, 
What's this here thing here? There's a meter in Pinguana peoples. He asked me, not you. Why did you not answer him then? But hold up. Hold, 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 that happens again. I'm throwing you two out of this class. Is that clear? You're well, well, yes, one. I have to go to my own school now, so my assistant will take over. Uh, you, okay? I need no water up, peoples. Now, if anybody gets out of line again, you come tell me, clear? Yes, water up, peoples. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. McGuffey. I just thought I'd look in on your class for a while, Logan. Well, sorry about that rumpus. We don't have them as a rule. Sorry you can't stay. I have to learn to read and write. I know. It was part of our deal, remember? I know, and it's all right. Uh, see you and the other two deans after school's out. Yeah. Logan Peebles was the dean of technical education, although he was also one of Perry North's students. Perry, the dean of primary education, had the largest class. Nearly 50 adults he was teaching to read and write. The pretty Indian girl, Elena Genera, who was also the Dean of Advanced Education, taught shorthand and typing to a small group of Kenyans, Asiatics, and Europeans. What do we give the students when they complete a course? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Don't you think you should? Well, we can't give them jobs. Of course not. Uh, maybe, uh... Maybe a certificate of some kind that states each student has completed whatever course he took. They've worked hard, studied as if their lives depended on it. They should have real diplomas, a real graduation exercise. Do you realize these people have never graduated from anything? Where would I get diplomas? The same place you get those silly certificates you were talking about. I don't even remember what a diploma looks like. I have several. Or you can go to any doctor's office. Well, bring one of yours in. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, Church of Faith? Oh, yes. Uh, this is the Church of Faith. McGuffey? McGuffey speaking. This is Dexter Hamilton. Oh, yeah. Hello. Uh, excuse me, please. If that means for me to get out, it is not necessary. What does that mean? Uh, what do you mean, what does that mean? I wasn't talking to you. Well? It is not necessary for me to leave. What does that mean? That's the second time you said that. I wasn't talking to you. And the second time for that, too. What do you want, Dexter? I have the contact for you. The name is Tawawa. You got a pencil? You got a pencil? Here. The name is Tawawa in Mozambique. Got it. This is private information. Huh, private. Is he to get in touch with me or I with him? And where? No, no, Tawawa will get in touch with you. Uh, is there something wrong? Yeah, I need diplomas. Diplomas? For the school. Uh, now, don't forget what you're there for. I won't, but I still need diplomas. Look, will you forget about the diplomas and let me know as soon as Tawawa gets in touch with you. That opium must be stopped before it reaches Marseille and it's turned into heroin. Uh, look, the, the line is noisy again. I'm going to hang up now. Okay. Look, Miss Genera, when this phone rings and I ask you to excuse me, it means you're to let me have my privacy. Under normal circumstances, I would let you. But this is silly. What do you mean, silly? I was talking to my boss. The director of the Drug Enforcement Administration. The director? How did you know that? Mr. McGuffey, what do you think we Kenyans are? A bunch of children? Go on. You are like many foreigners who think of Kenya as a nation of illiterate blacks and a land of big game for you to hunt so you can hang animals' heads on your walls. We all speak Swahili, but most of us also speak English. How many in your country are fluent in more than one language? What's that got to do with it? The Church of Faith, it makes us laugh. We have Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, and the mosques, temples, and churches to prove it. The Kenyan government was delighted to let you start a school, especially glad of Perry North's efforts. How did you know I was speaking to the... The plans for that shipment of opium have been known for months. Kenyan authorities are on the lookout for it 24 hours a day, and not only in Mombasa, but up and down the coast... And in Nairobi, in case the smugglers try to send it in by air. But it's going to... <sighs> Never mind. I know. It is destined for Marseille to be turned into heroin. Mr. McGuffey, we've known about it all along. But the school is more important. 
Hmm. Maybe a mapping outfit. Seems to me I saw one on Zanzibar Road. What are you talking about? The diplomas. Maybe a mapping outfit can make them up. Good idea. Listen, do you know the name of my contact, too? No, but the Kenyan authorities probably do. <clears throat> we, uh, we'll keep this a secret between us about the opium shipment. It is all right with me. The problem is, how does one keep a secret when hundreds already know about it? Good question. Well, <clears throat> I think I'll go call on that mapping outfit. And I will go to the hospital. It is my Red Cross day. I suppose Olena Generis telling me that she and lots of others knew of the opium shipment should have upset me, but it didn't. Maybe because the school had become important to me. I was now determined to give the students a graduation exercise they'd never forget. However, I spoke to Perry North in my office about Olena's knowledge of the opium shipment. He wasn't surprised. As I said, Miss Janeri is a very bright girl. Did you know the Kenyan authorities were onto this, too? Oh, yes, Mr. McGuffey. Why didn't you tell me? You're supposed to be my assistant on this thing. Well, I knew you'd find out in time anyway. Excuse me, Perry. Oh, don't leave. Hello, Church of Faith here. Mr. McGuffey. McGuffey speaking. This is Mr. Wawa. Miss? You're a girl? I was the last time I looked. A girl? I'm a woman, Mr. McGoofy. But, but you're supposed to be my... Are you in Mozambique? I am. And I'm your contact. The opium shipment will put in at Djibouti, not Mombasa. Perry, has Dexter lost his mind using a girl to contact me? I don't know, Mr. McGoofy. Did you get that, Mr. McGoofy? McGuffey. Get what? I said the opium shipment will put in at Djibouti instead of Mombasa. Yes, yes, Djibouti instead of Mombasa. The change was necessitated by the activity of the Kenyans. Does Hamilton Dexter know you're a girl? She knows I'm a woman, yes. And he hired you anyway? Mr. Dexter has used my services before, Mr. McGuffey. Maybe, but, but, but this could be dangerous. And, and you're a girl. I am a woman, and I will contact you when I have a date for when the ship from Rangoon puts in. At that time, we can arrange a meeting in Djibouti. Goodbye, Mr. Mogufi. Wait, wait a minute. I wanted to talk to you. She hung up. Well, perhaps she said all that was necessary. I can't believe it. A girl contact. I mean, I've heard of women's lib, but this is ridiculous. Why are you so surprised, Mr. McGuffey? I'm supposed to sneak aboard some unknown ship or freighter or whatever they're using, get several kilos of opium and destroy it so it can't wind up on the U.S. streets as heroin, and, and she talks about going with me. What are you doing? Oh, looking at the diploma you got from the mapping firm. Oh, uh, you know, I, I don't think it should have that heading. Do you... Olena said the Church of Faith was a laugh. He, she was right. It shouldn't read School of the Church of Faith. Uh, maybe something like University of the Tropics? Hey, how about calling it the Equatorial University? Ah, I like that, Mr. McGuffey. Equatorial University. And I want these students to have a graduation exercise that's meaningful to them, Perry. A valedictorian, a blessing by a man of cloth, a guest speaker... A, do you think you could get the president? I can try. In the way his eyes lighted up when I told him we were going to teach people to read and write, I can try, Mr. McGuffey. And each dean will hand out the diplomas. Hey, we're going to need something to wrap them in. Ah, and mine was tied with blue ribbon. Mm -hmm. And how about the soccer stadium as a place to hold it? Oh, just fine. When does the opium arrive in Djibouti? I don't know. Tawawa doesn't know. To wow, a woman, a female contact for a drug shipment. Uh, wait a minute. Rather than climb the walls, I'm going to order the diplomas and try to get a churchman to give the blessing. I decided to go to the Anglican Cathedral on Nkrumah Road and tell my story to the archbishop there. A few days later, he gathered some five religious leaders together, and I explained what I wanted. 
To my amazement, they all wanted to give the blessing, claiming that the student shouldn't be restricted to just one faith. What do you think, Mr. McGuffey? But we only have room and time for one blessing, Your Grace. Ah. Uh, then it's up to us to decide who gets the job? Well, yes, sir, but only one can do it. I see. Uh, does each of you gentlemen have a shilling? Uh, yes. Mm, yes. Mm, fine, then we shall toss for it. Heads will be the first winners. Very well, gentlemen. Toss. Ah, you have tails, so you are out. And you, and you. Oh. Mm, that leaves me and the father here. <laughs> Very well, father. Toss. Tails, you lose. Heads, I win. Oh. Please remember, gentlemen, Mr. McGuffey came to me first. <laughs> I could have just taken this assignment, but I did not. I called you all together here. It was resolved, fair and square. The idea of five churchmen gambling to see which was to deliver the blessing on graduation day was a wondrous thing to me. And to Perry North, Elena Genera, and Logan Peebles when I told the three deans of the school about it. <laughs> they actually tossed shillings to see who got it. They did. <laughs> and the archbishop won, so we'll have an Episcopal blessing. At least I'll understand it. So will the students, Logan. The diplomas turned out fine, Mr. McGuffey. Now, each dean is to sign them for his or her students. We understand. What, what about the blue ribbon to tie them with? The Red Cross had only yarn at the hospital, so I got some ribbon from the Kenya Rayon Mills on Chongongui. Twenty yards of it. Yay, white. Good. Now, how'd you make out getting a guest speaker, Perry? The president will try to make it, but if he's held up in Nairobi, Mr. McGuffey... He'll send the vice president. Good. Now, all we need to get is a place to hold the graduation and a valedictorian. I think I've got one for you, Mr. Mugafi. Who? He read his speech to me and, uh, well, it's important. Who is it? Stryker. The big Kenyan who broke up the dice game. But he's illiterate, isn't he? Not anymore, Mr. Mugafi. And the title of his speech, which he wrote himself, is What Education Means to Me. Richard Whitmark again, and here's the concluding act of the McGuffey Connection. Equatorial University. Equatorial University? I was calling the Church of Faith. Who is this? Who is this? Arnold McGuffey, is this Miss Tawawa from Mozambique? It is, Mr. McGuffey. Now listen carefully. I am not a male chauvinist pig, but I won't stand still when they send a woman to do a man's work. Correction, you are a male chauvinist pig, and it's not a man's work. It's anybody's work. I just happen to be a woman. That's not my fault, and I will I not... I will meet you in Djibouti the morning of the 10th of next month. The ship is due at the port in the evening. Have you heard what I said, Miss Tawawa? Yes, I heard. Are you still interested in stolen an opium shipment? Of course, but I... Then meet me in Djibouti on the morning of the 10th. I will be at the airport. Now listen. She hung up on me again. She hung up on me again. Who? Miss Tawawa, that woman. She said the shipment of opium was due in Djibouti the evening of the 10th. She expects me to meet her at the airport in the morning, Perry. The 10th, Mr. McGuffey. Of next month? That's what Tawawa said. That's graduation day. The 10th of next month? You said it yourself, Mr. Mugabe, because it was the only day that you could get to soccer stadium for the graduation exercise. Ah, I knew there was something. And all of the students have been told about it. That woman, wouldn't you know a woman would throw a monkey wrench into all our plans? Hello? Church of Faith? Who wants to know? Well, I, for one. McGuffey? Yes. Oh, Oh, hello, Dexter. You mad at something? No. Yes, yes, I am. Miss Tawawa just called me from Mozambique. Well, about your objections, may I point out that Miss Tawawa is perfectly capable. In your book, not in mine. She has a black belt in karate. Oh? Yeah, she also scored higher than any man in pistol shooting. Ninety-nine bulls out of a hundred. What are you trying to tell me, Dexter? That your complaints about her are ill-founded, McGuffey. You know what she just told me? That I was to meet her at the airport in Djibouti the morning of the 10th. Well? That's next month. So what's your problem? It's the 10th. So? 
Perry and I can't meet her in Djibouti then. Because she's a woman? Because it's graduation day. Come again, McGuffey. I said it's graduation day. You hear me, Dexter? I think so. You said graduation. Right. And Equatorial University is going to have an exercise our students will remember the rest of their lives. Equatorial University? Yeah. I got the soccer field, and the Archbishop of the Anglican Church is going to give the blessing. And Perry has a valedictorian who learned to read and write in his class for illiterates. And uh, Just a minute. Who's the guest speaker, Perry? Uh, either the president or the vice president, whoever is available. And a guest speaker, a high-ranking official of the Kenyan government. Then we're handing out diplomas. McGuffey, will you be in Djibouti the 10th of next month? I just told you, Dexter. I can't. It's graduation day. It was a bright and beautiful day when we gathered at the soccer field. A boxing ring had been set up for the graduation exercise, and bench seats in front of it were filled with students excitedly waiting to get their diplomas. Their families and others who'd come to witness the ceremonies partially filled the stadium on one side. On the boxing ring, the three deans of the school sat beside the archbishop, the vice president, and myself. The ceremonies began with a benediction from the archbishop. It was followed by my introduction of the vice president, who read what the president himself had written, then beamingly added some words of his own, complimenting the students and calling them an inspiration to all teenagers. <laughs> then Perry North stood up. It has been a great honor to serve as dean of the primary school of Equatorial University. It has been an additional honor that the man selected to serve as valedictorian was a student in the primary school. I now present your valedictorian, Juana Stryker, whose subject is What Education Means to Me. <clears throat> I, I have wrote this all by myself. Many weeks ago, I cannot read or write anything. Now, I can read what other people wrote and learn what they think. Now, when I read how one man fixes his troubles, I learn how maybe I can fix mine, and I do not feel alone in this world no more. I know it is the only world we got, and most all the people in it are good, who have got in their hearts the same feelings as me. I was afraid in the beginning. The only thing I am afraid of now is I cannot live long enough to learn all I want so as to be as good as I want to be. That is what I mean when I say what education has done for me. Thank you, Asante. <laughs> Congratulations, Stryker. I'm very proud of you. Asante, what or not? It was a fine speech, Stryker. Good going. Asante, what are peoples? Missouri, Missouri, what a Stryker. Good, good. Asante, what are vice president? Your attention, please. You who are to receive diplomas will please come up on the platform by those stairs on the left, Kushoto, and leave by the stairs over here on the right, Kulia. You will receive your diploma from the vice president, who will get it from the dean of your particular school. Okay, Barry. Here you are, sir. Asante for the north. One of people. I thought you were one of the deans. Mm -hmm. Dean of the... Uh, the technical school, yes, yes sir, yes, sir. But I'm graduating from the primary school. Oh, congratulations, one of people. Thank you, sir. Perry North students were the first to receive their diplomas. Then came Olena Genera's School of Advanced Education, followed by Logan Peebles pupils. It was when Olena gave a diploma to the vice president, who gave it to a beautiful Arabian girl, and my eyes followed her as she hipped her way to the exit stairs, that I became aware that you were sitting beside me, Dexter. I gotta compliment you, McGuffey. You've done a good thing. How long have you been here, Dexter? No, I watched and listened from the stadium until they began passing out the diplomas. I wondered what that item was on your expense account. Dexter, you didn't come all the way from Washington just to see a graduation in Mombasa or quibble about my expense account. 
Now level with me. Well, frankly, I came to chew you out. For not meeting my contact, Miss Tawawa, in Djibouti this morning? Well, yes, that among other things. Like firing me? Well, not before learning more about this equatorial university. After all, it was my idea for you to start a school. As a cover, I might add. Uh, who's the pretty girl handing out diplomas to the vice president? Olena Genera. She was recruited by Perry North and acted as dean of advanced education. How about the opium shipment? Hey, did that big Kenyan really write that speech himself? Yeah, yeah, he was a student in Perry's class of illiterates. How about the opium shipment? Hmm? Oh, 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 forget it, forget it, forget it. Forget it? Yeah, the ship isn't putting in at Djibouti after all. It put in for refueling at Majunga on Madagascar. It's already put in? Yeah, yeah, a week or so ago. She's a freighter called Colonial Lady. I suppose she's well on her way to Suez by now. How do you know so much? Oh, from my operative who went aboard, found the opium, got it off, and destroyed it. You know we had an operative in Madagascar. We don't. She flew over from Mozambique. She? Miss Tawawa. Her? And since you get along so well together, I'm sending you both on an assignment to Hong Kong. Miss Tawawa and me? McGuffey. It's better than being canned in Mombasa. I don't know. I don't know. Well, think about it a moment. Miss Tawawa is a very beautiful Eurasian. Filipino and Spanish, I think. Born in Manila. Uh, she'll meet us in Nairobi. If you decide to go, you'll leave from there. Now, tell me about the school. Miss Tawawa, Hong Kong, and me. Hmm? How did I ever make such a connection? You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week. The McGuffey Connection was written by Ted Sherdeman, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were William Shallert, Peggy Weber, and Ben Wright. Also heard were Shepard Mencken, Richard Peel, Ray Tasco, and Jack Crucian. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Mark Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CDI.